Justice Tehran Moseneke has concluded a final round of talks with key stakeholders in Lesotho. The leadership forum was crucial in paving a way for the much-anticipated national dialogue to be held on the last week of November. SADC troops deployed in Lesotho will also be withdrawn from the mountain kingdom as the reforms process draws to a close. A well-attended session, but still with many grudges and disgruntlements yet to be ironed out. As media is sent packing, these leaders have a few hours to settle out outstanding issues, but it seems like the issue of the exiled leaders, mainly former Deputy Prime Minister Muteja Medzin's return to Lesotho, remains an elephant in the room. Yes, there is a definite understanding that the entertainment thing is going to come. It's going to be part of uh, the, the dialogue, the first dialogue. Uh, everybody is agreed. The coalition government is agreed. The opposition government is agreed. The opposition outside parliament, everyone is agreed that it is important for him to be part of this dialogue in the kingdom of Lesotho. And he himself has made an undertaking that he's coming back home. If they break that promise? I think the coalition government, even the opposition, they have a very clear understanding of the risks and the threats for Lesotho if the SADC uh, reform process fails. I, have, I think they, they, they are very clear as to what would happen. The court is yet to pronounce itself soon, the matter relating to clause 10 in question. In the meantime, it has suspended the operalization of clause 10 pending the conclusion of the matter. Any adverse decision on this matter could send the reforms process on a nose dive. This clause is not uh, definitely not an amnesty. It doesn't dispense of justice, but it uh, is a temporary deferment of legal proceedings in order to create an environment that is conducive to uh, completing, continuing and completing the dialogue, the national dialogue which is going on now. It is not an uncommon measure. It, there are cases from other countries where similar measures have been taken. And uh, I believe it should be seen in this light, but of course it's now up to the courts to clarify what this clause exactly means. Until the reforms process is successfully concluded, the tendency for politicians outmaneuvering the constitution for self-preservation purposes continue to exist. And one such threat is floor crossing. Uh, this is important because if this government collapses, the likelihood is that there is going to be another coalition government which will operate on the same foundations and it will be inherently unstable as the last two have been. Uh, we need to overcome this, new foundations have to be created and then of course it is up to the politicians to decide uh, what they think is the best cause of action. Media blackout during reforms process has been cause for concern with repercussions of possible bias often raised. So this, this particular uh, leaders uh, forum, for the first time media has been included as a formal agenda in the, in, the legal reform, in the national legal reforms. What would be the repercussions of treating media as just uh, poorer cousins of the partners? Yeah, I, I think the, 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 the main issue is with regard to misunderstanding because people look at media as only participating in terms of, of reporting. However, media is a sector, it has leadership, and uh, there are some strategic issues that have to be informed by the decisions of the media leadership. So there's a need to look at it as a sector, as opposed to, to just a vehicle for information, information exchange. The National Forum is expected to be held around the last week of November, and all exiled leaders are expected to be party to it. <laughs> SABC News, Maserulisul.